Hi, everybody. I am Cello, as we just heard, and I'm one of the people working with the agencies in UK and Ireland. And I think I have the easiest job today because it's to get you excited about YouTube, which I'm sure you already are, because at the end of the day, there is only one YouTube. But before I do that, let me take a step back and remind you a little bit of why it's important for you as brands to be present throughout the customer journey. There is a McKinsey study conducted a couple of years ago that showed that brands that are in the initial consideration set for users are three times more likely to be purchased than brands who are not. And in our own internal data, we found out that when a user is being shown video ads alongside brand ads, there are 11% um, higher chances of converting that if you are only showing them video ads. So the question for you might be, what do we have to do now? And what I'm here to tell you today is that there are three main things that we need to keep in mind when we think about YouTube as the one shop for you to do all of this. The first one is that YouTube has the creators and the content the users are looking for. Just to put this into perspective, Creators choose to work with YouTube and invest in that because YouTube invests in its creators at the same time. Over the past uh, three years, Google paid to these creators more than $50 billion, that's billions with a B, that compares to roughly 231 million that TikTok did in the same period. And those 50 billion is also more than the whole a budget that Netflix used for content creation in the same period. At the same time, YouTube is the only truly multi-platform um, solution for you, whether you're on your phone, whether you're on your laptop, or if you're watching on TV, whether you prefer to consume shorter video formats or if you prefer to consume longer. And lastly, and this ties back to the previous presentation, is powered by Google's AI solution for tracking, for measuring, for reporting, so you can see your whole marketing strategy with Google unified in one single place. At its core, YouTube is the most diverse, the biggest content library that there is in the world. And users don't go to YouTube just to watch a video and leave. More than, now than ever, users choose to engage, to participate, to stay in YouTube. Just a little bit of a show of hands. Who has watched a YouTube video in the past week? Yes, OK. Everybody, I'm checking if somebody didn't watch a video, and I'm going to find <laughs> you afterward. OK. Who maybe watched a video that was 30 minutes or longer? Maybe you watch uh, show, a game, something. OK, that's more than half the room, I see. And who, like me, spent the whole Saturday last week watching the Eurovision finals, all the individual songs, all the press conference and everything? Nobody? Wow, I'm the only one. I see one hand there, and that's more than enough. The two of us, three of us, watched the whole of Eurovision for free on YouTube. And I know we're not alone, because YouTube offers a catalog of music that is unparalleled across any of the competitors in the industry, with over 100 million tracks uploaded in the platform. If we think, for example, about sports, in the coming months, we have the Paris Olympics, we have the Euros, and it's no longer this moment that you just connect to watch a game. You can see the pre-game, you can see the post-game, you can see the commentary, you can see videos created around that. Pretty much like Eurovision, if you ask me, I'm not a sports person, so I wouldn't know. But the thing, the, the thing that for me is important to keep in mind here is that YouTube is not just what you see on your phone. It's the same YouTube that you see when you're watching Connected TV. As a product, Connected TV has grown immensely over the past two years, and now it has become one of the staples for the, the users in any household in the region. And we can see that in EMEA, streaming has grown so fast that now 50% of all the content that is being streamed in connected TV 
is longer than 21 minutes. So people are actually watching, which is an opportunity for you as brands to connect with those users in a very seamless way. If we go to the other side of the spectrum, we have YouTube Shorts that it was mentioned a little while ago as well, that has taken the world by storm with over 2 billion monthly um, users connected on YouTube Shorts. When you think about it, those 2 billion people in YouTube Shorts that is part of the whole of YouTube is more than what TikTok has as reach globally. So it's an even bigger opportunity for you to do this as brands without having to even leave the YouTube platform. And this is especially true for uh, younger audiences like Gen Z or Alpha who stayed in um, and choose to, to engage with different type of contents more often. So the last thing that I wanted to talk to you about before I hand it over to my colleague Katie is that as brand, for you, YouTube can offer you the possibility to be present for your users whenever they are in the way that will resonate with them the most. So either it's a short format or a long format, either it's a phone or a computer or the TV, YouTube is the one solution that you need to help boost your brand for shoppers who are trying to connect with you. So without further ado, I'm going to hand it over to Katie. Thank you. Thanks, Bello. Hi, everyone. My name is Katie, and I'm a senior account strategist here at Google. And I'm delighted to be on the stage with Wolfgang today to take, take you through how you can extend your social strategy on Google and YouTube with their latest product, DemandGen. This year marks an inflection point for marketing. The work we all do is being fundamentally remade by two massive changes, which we might have heard about earlier on. The rapid acceleration of AI and the deprecation of third-party cookies this year. Inflection points are critical junctures where change is, is pronounced, but within that change lies significant potential for new growth and opportunity. Google has proactively adapted its product ecosystem to address these industry shifts, harnessing AI to connect the user throughout the entire sales journey. And Cello spoke to us a little bit about YouTube and the importance of a strong brand strategy. And this sits at the top of the marketing funnel. And we know that our proven combination of search and performance max campaigns can effectively drive sales and maximize return on ad spend. And this sits at the bottom of the funnel. And now we have our brand new product, which sits in the middle of the funnel, demand gen, which is specifically designed to drive purchase consideration outcomes and push more demand down the funnel. While these campaigns are designed to cater for different areas of the funnel, they actually complement each other really well and work really well with driving great results when paired together. For example, customers that use Performance Max saw 21% more conversions when paired with Demand Gen. In order to grow, it's not enough to just focus on converting existing customers. We also need to focus on creating more demand to avoid hitting a sales ceiling. By connecting with people who are interested in products similar to ours, we can create a steady stream of potential customers and keep sales driving forward. But this mid-funnel marketing, where consumers are still weighing up their options, is often overlooked, with less than 5% of marketing efforts being allocated to this critical consideration phase. And we know that the customer path to path to purchase is no longer linear. And people are discovering products and purchasing anywhere along the funnel as they stream, scroll, and connect across multiple touch points and channels. And to the first point here, you can see that one out of three consumers are spending more time making decisions and taking or considering more brands. And this creates a consideration gap where potential customers are engaged, but they haven't yet committed to buy. And during this consideration phase, Consumers are highly influential. And you can see here that just under half are happy to switch providers in search for a better deal. This is a huge opportunity for us to influence their final decision-making process. And to Cello's point earlier on, if we are in a, con a consumer's consideration set, they're three times more likely to purchase from us. Digital and social channels have also changed how consumers behave. It's a constant battle for their attention and marketers are relying on more and more platforms to reach their target audience. 
we know that video is a major trend. And just recently, we found that 50% of consumers will watch an online video before making a purchase. And consumers flock to YouTube and Google to discover an act. They're twice as likely to find new products and brands on YouTube versus other social channels. And 86% take immediate action after discovering something new. Demand gen is a campaign type that is designed to connect your advertising where consumers want to see it when they're in this critical consideration phase. It builds upon the existing strengths of today's campaigns. The reach of YouTube and Google's most engaging surfaces, the power of video and image creative tailored to, or served to tailored audiences, and the proven ability to drive results throughout the customer journey from initial interest to conversion with measurable results. And you can see here, it offers various mul multiple creative formats across YouTube, Discover, and Gmail, including various aspect ratios, single image, carousel, and product-specific formats. And you can even repurpose your social media content for these campaigns to minimize extra effort. With customers taking longer to decide and having more choices than ever, focusing on mid-funnel marketing can really help you to stay top of mind during a customer's decision-making process. Demand Gen brings together Google and YouTube to capture attention and drive action, all powered by Google's AI and with the potential to reach up to 3 billion users. As shown on the slide, it offers various impressive features like, like lookalike audiences, which Chris will now delve into further along with a case study. Thank you, and over to Chris. Yeah, thank you, Katie and, uh, and Cello. Um, this time last year, I stood up here and put forward an idea of repurposing your social media assets to use as part of your PPC strategy to rapidly grow new video formats, such as short form video. Today, Google have formalized this idea and kind of stolen it from me with their new campaign <laughs> type, Demand Gen, which as Katie said, can simply be viewed as an extension of your social media strategy. In its essence, Demand Gen is an acquisition tool. It relies on visual creatives to drive awareness and consideration among prospective buyers. Now, there's two key difference, differences between Demand Gen and its predecessor discovery campaigns. Number one is the inclusion of vertical video, and the other one is the ability to leverage first-party data in some interest in new ways. Now, vertical video as a format continues to explode in popularity. And from the same time I was up here last year, the Shorts Network has grown by 20 billion daily viewers. But while more and more users adopt these popular formats, so do those pesky advertisers, and they drive up costs, and first mover advantage starts to erode. I want to take you through just how far we've taken our ideas from this time last year and evolved to stay ahead of the game and get the very most out of video and products like Demand Gen. Demand Gen was accessible by beta in Q4 2023. And when new products like this come to the market with exciting new functionality, we're always really eager to put it to the test and see what we can drive performance for our clients. Now, as part of the Wolfgang Academy, we quite literally sit in a circle. We discuss ideas, insights, and innovations. The whole PPC team come together and try to understand these beta, betas a little bit better and understand where we can extract the maximum amount of value from them. And what I can say is that we found that different parts of this campaign type do work better than others. Now, the next part was to understand how we can leverage the other critical components of this campaign type through first-party data. How many of you have thought about your CRM as an acquisition tool? With new features in Demand Gen, we're able to leverage our first-party data in some really interesting new ways. Now, your first-party data should not be hidden away in a spreadsheet or a CRM that nobody looks at. Your first-party data should be used as a tool. Your CRM is a customer data goldmine. Now, leveraging your CRM data not only allows us to be much more efficient when targeting new customers, it allows us to be much more effective at measuring new customers' growth. Now, whether you're Google, Wolfgang Digital, Retail, Ecom, lead gen, brick and mortar, the same principles apply. The engine of growth for your business is new customer acquisition. Now, this is an actual example of how I'm leveraging first party data for one of my clients on paid search. Now, in a typical world, the audiences that sit at the top of your marketing funnel are broad and homogenous, and they're an absolutely fantastic way to flush your ads bend down the toilet. By leveraging first party data in a controlled way to target new users, well, we're bringing efficiencies to new customer acquisition. Now, you'll notice some interesting prospecting audiences that sit at the top of this funnel. These are called seed lists. Seed lists are essentially lookalike or similar audiences that can be controlled by setting narrow to broad modifiers depending on the first-party data cohort that we, that we give it. The 
possibilities of how you use this data as part of your strategy are honestly endless. So I'm gonna take you through an example of how we're leveraging the principles of new customer acquisition to drive revenue growth for a client in a challenging industry where their costs are up and their ad spends are static. Google is fantastic at matching high user intent to drive purchase. But what happens to that user after they've purchased? Well, you don't wanna hear it, but you pay for them again. And if they wanna buy again next week in 30 days, the chances are you'll end up paying for them again. So what we've done for this particular client is that we use the ManGen to drive a new user to their website. We then offer a first party data exchange, 5%, 10% off to capture that first party data. From there, we pass it over to email and let email nurture, drive AOV, drive LTV. Uh, Meanwhile, well, we don't pay for this customer again. Um, and, and the beauty of it um, is, that, is that that client that we drove, they're not ROAS anymore. Um, their lifetime value, um, and we get to spend that money that we would have spent on getting the return purchase and driving more new customers into the funnel. Now, by leaning into the strengths of each tool and letting demand gen of first party data exchange um, turn these into recurring revenue, uh, the subscription service that we've, that we've used for this first party data strategy has grown by 1400% year on year. With platform costs ballooning for clients year on year, this client has seen double figure revenue growth year on year. Um, without spending any more money, and more importantly, future-proofing their business by turning new customers into lifetime value. Thank you.